Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Both NVIDIA's G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync eliminate tearing and stutter by changing the display's refresh rate to match the frame rate. So let's say that you got the 144Hz display and your game runs at 64fps. In this case then both G-Sync and FreeSync will change the display's refresh rate to 64Hz so that it matches your frame rate. When the frame rate then increases to 105 then the display's refresh rate is increased to 105Hz. When it goes down to 99 FPS, then the refresh rate changes to 99 Hz. So, in other words, the monitor will change its refresh rate to display an image as soon as your graphics card rendered it. That said, both FreeSync and G-Sync can only do that when the frame rate is lower than the maximum display refresh rate, because a 144 Hz display cannot increase its refresh rate to match 159 FPS. And so it's important that you keep your frame rate below the maximum display refresh rate when you want to ensure that FreeSync or G-Sync is always active. So G-Sync and FreeSync use the same technique to fix tearing and stutter. The major difference between the two is that G-Sync monitors require a special module provided by Nvidia, which the monitor manufacturers have to pay a licensing fee for, while AMD's FreeSync builds upon a free open display standard. So, as a result, monitors which support G-Sync are more expensive than FreeSync monitors. However, Nvidia has very strict guidelines in place to ensure that G-Sync performance remains the same across different monitors. Such does not really exist for FreeSync, and so it's possible that FreeSync performance varies quite a bit between different models and manufacturers. Also, FreeSync requires a graphics card from AMD, while G-Sync requires a Nvidia graphics card. So this means that when you connect the G-Sync monitor to an AMD graphics card, then you can use the monitor, just G-Sync will not work and vice versa. Also you should always check the specifications of your graphics card to find out if it supports that technology, because not all do. So last November I got the PG248Q from ASUS to do a G-Sync review. And in that video I showed you how it works, how to configure it properly and I showed you the results of my input lag tests, which did prove that G-Sync does not increase the input or button to pixel delay and that means that the responsiveness of games does not get worse when you use G-Sync. The two most asked questions in response to that video were, is G-Sync worth it and how about FreeSync? So is G-Sync worth the higher costs? Well, after I finished the review of the PG248Q, I sent the review sample back to ASUS. And only when I then played the first game with my normal 144Hz gaming monitor, I noticed what difference it makes. It was not just the tearing that now bothered me, I really missed how smooth games feel with G-Sync. Long story short, for me G-Sync is worth it, which is why I bought the PG248Q just one month later and I'm still loving it. So how about FreeSync? Well, it took a while, but thanks to ASUS I can answer this question today as they sent me review samples of an ASUS RX570 graphics card and a MG278Q monitor which support FreeSync. I will put links to that monitor and the graphics card in the description down below. Now, before we look into FreeSync, I want to talk about the Windows 10 Creators update and how it seems to affect both Nvidia's G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync. So here we got my PG248Q which is connected to my GTX 1080. The game that is running here is Overwatch and I used its built-in FPS limiter to lock the frame rate at 142 so that it stays below 144 which is the maximum display refresh rate of the PG248Q in its default configuration. Then in the top center you see the FPS counter from DxTory and in the top right you see the FPS counter of Nvidia Share, formerly known as Shadowplay. The reason why I show you both is that I want to demonstrate that most FPS counters are not sensitive enough to show you that your frame rate is fluctuating. Next I enable the FPS counter inside the menu of the PG248Q which shows us the active display refresh rate and so allows us to keep an eye on G-Sync. When I now move left and right then you should notice that there is tearing and stutter. That said the stutter might look worse than it really is because this camera records just 60 frames per second. When I now pause the video, then the XTORY clearly shows that the frame rate and so the display refresh rate is dropping down to less than 140, while the FPS counter from Nvidia doesn't. The reason why we see start and tearing is that the fluctuating frame rate also causes the monitor's refresh rate to change wildly. It even hits the maximum display refresh rate of 144, which then deactivates G-Sync and that's why we see start and tearing. This was not the case before the creator's update. However, there is a very easy fix for that. 
All I need to do is Alt tab out of Overwatch and change the Windows Power Plan from Balanced, which is the default, to High Performance. When I then go back into the game, then we see a stable frame rate and display refresh rate, with only occasional drops below 140. Now there is no tearing and no stutter. But again, please keep in mind that you watch a 60fps recording, so that might introduce some stutter. When I then Alt tap out of Overwatch again and change the power plan back to balanced, then we get the fluctuating frame rate, the stutter and the tearing again. So, as I said before, this is not limited to Nvidia's G-Sync. When I began to test FreeSync, I noticed the exact same issue there, which is why I kept the high performance plan enabled during all my tests. So if you use G-Sync or FreeSync on Windows 10 with the Creators update, then you might want to change the power plan to high performance while you are playing games to ensure that the FPS limiter works properly. Now let's have a look at the MG278Q and FreeSync. Just like the PG248Q, it also provides the FPS counter feature which allows us to monitor FreeSync and how it changes the display's refresh rate. So, with FreeSync disabled, the counter in the top left will show us the fixed display refresh rate of 144Hz and we get tearing as well as stutter. This is true for both exclusive mode full screen and windowed mode. When I then enable FreeSync, where the overlay shows us the supported range, then I will still see tearing and stutter as long as the frame rate reaches the maximum display refresh rate of 144Hz. So what I need to do is change the FPS limit from 144 to 142, which should then eliminate the tearing and stutter. However, when you keep an eye on the FPS counter in the top left, which tracks the active display refresh rate, then you will notice that it mostly shows 144, even though the DxTory overlay stays at a stable 142 FPS. When I played Overwatch in this configuration, then it mostly felt very smooth and there was next to no tearing. However, I found that in order to avoid that the monitor's refresh rate reaches 144 and to eliminate the occasional tearing and stutter, I had to set the FPS cap to 130. In this example here, you can see how the monitor's refresh rate goes up to 130, even though the frame rate is limited to 120 and according to the XTORY stays at 120. So unlike G-Sync, it seems that FreeSync has a hard time to keep the monitor's refresh rate and the frame rate in sync. And it doesn't matter if you run the monitor at its native resolution or in 1080p, the result is the same. But AMD offers an additional way to limit your frame rate, which is built into the settings tool. It's called FRTC or Frame Rate Target Control, which you can enable globally for all games, or you can add profiles for individual games and then have different FPS limits for your games which can be very useful when you know that your system can only get a stable 100 FPS in Battlefield 1, then you can set that value as frame rate target just for that game. Now, when I select 142 in the global settings and then go back to Overwatch where I set the built-in FPS limiter to 300 to avoid that it interferes with FRTC, then the monitor's refresh rate gets pretty stable and only rarely hits 144Hz. There's also no tearing and no stutter now. This means that FRTC helps to maintain a specific frame rate and so a specific display refresh rate. The question however is if it increases the input or button to pixel delay and in consequence makes the game less responsive. This is what we will have a look at next after we talked about the game mode that was introduced in the Windows 10 Creators update. So by default the game mode is already enabled inside the Windows settings. In addition to that settings, there is also a use game mode for this game option inside the Windows game bar. Besides the game mode, Windows 10 also includes full screen optimizations which you can disable inside the properties of an application. Now do any of these Windows 10 optimizations affect the responsiveness or button to pixel delay? To find out, I use a high speed camera, a gaming monitor and a mouse which has a LED connected directly to its left mouse button which will light up when I press it. Inside of Overwatch I map the move left action to the left mouse button so that my character will move to the left when I press it. So for every test case I repeated this test 20 times and to get the delay results I had to review the recorded high speed footage where I looked for the frame where the LED lights up and then I counted the frames until the monitor showed me the action triggered by that input. This then allowed me to calculate the delay between the button and the pixel. 
Now, while the full screen optimizations do not have any impact on the delays, the game mode actually reduces the button to pixel delay by about 5 milliseconds on average, and you don't even have to enable it inside the game bar to get that delay decrease. In fact, when I enabled it inside the game bar as well, then this did not lead to an additional delay decrease. However, it might help to get a slight frame rate increase on some systems. So, after I got these first test results, I decided to keep the game mode enabled in all the other tests that I did with FreeSync and G-Sync. Now, if you've seen any of my previous input or button to pixel delay videos, then you probably wonder why the delays here are lower than what I showed in my previous videos. The truth is that I'm not quite sure where that delay decrease is coming from. About two days after I released my last video, our power company had a slight problem, which resulted in overvoltage that killed my power supply, mainboard, CPU, RAM and my G502 test mouse that I used in all my previous tests. So to fix my PC, I bought the same mainboard and the same CPU, but I went for different RAM and the G402 instead of the G502 to save some money. And I also switched to the Windows 10 Creators update. So one of these changes must be responsible for the lower delays that I now measure in my tests, but I have not yet figured out which one. So I will investigate this further and I hopefully will soon be able to tell you what caused this delay decrease on my system. Now let's have a look at the FreeSync delays. First of all, we need some reference values. So with FreeSync and VSync disabled, a fixed display refresh rate of 144Hz and a fixed frame rate of 144, I measured an average button to pixel delay of 14.06 milliseconds in Overwatch. With VSync enabled, which locks the frame rate to 144, I then measured an average delay of 35.11 milliseconds. So VSync more than doubles the delay. Now with FreeSync enabled and the frame limiter set to 144, I measured an average delay of 14.5 milliseconds. In this test I also saw tearing and stutter because when the frame rate matches the maximum display refresh rate, then neither G-Sync nor FreeSync are active. When I had both FreeSync and VSync active while limiting the frame rate to 144, then I got the full VSync delay because VSync will take over once the frame rate matches the display's refresh rate. So, to ensure that FreeSync is active, we need to limit the frame rate to 142, which fixes the tearing and stutter, while only slightly increasing the button to pixel delay as the game is now running at 142 FPS instead of 144 FPS. When I then also enable VSync, then the average delay will not increase as FreeSync is active now, and VSync would only be active once the frame rate reaches the maximum display's refresh rate. So these results are very interesting, but what we really want to do is compare FreeSync and G-Sync. So at a fixed display refresh rate of 144Hz and 142 FPS, I measured an average button to pixel delay of 15 milliseconds with the MG278Q and 14 milliseconds with the PG248Q. Now while there is a difference between these two monitors, it's not what we are interested in. What we want to know is if enabling FreeSync and G-Sync makes the delays worse compared to that baseline. So with FreeSync active at 142 FPS, we get an average delay of 15.28 milliseconds. And with G-Sync active, I measured an average delay of 13.94 milliseconds. This means no delay increase. Now, how about a lower frame rate, like 60 FPS? With FreeSync disabled, a fixed display refresh rate of 60 Hz and 60 FPS, I got an average delay of 24.15 milliseconds on the MG278Q and 21.68 milliseconds with the PG248Q. When we then look at the results where FreeSync and G-Sync were enabled, then we see that neither of them caused the delay increase at that frame rate. So it's safe to say that both FreeSync and G-Sync fixed tearing and stutter without decreasing the responsiveness of the game. Now, that is for exclusive full screen mode. How about borderless windowed mode where both FreeSync and G-Sync also fixed tearing and stutter? So in exclusive full screen mode, FreeSync has an average delay of 15.28 milliseconds and G-Sync has 13.94 milliseconds. In borderless windowed mode and windowed mode, the delay increases by about 7 milliseconds. However, this is not the fault of FreeSync nor G-Sync. This is because exclusive full screen mode offers better performance than windowed mode. And as I mentioned earlier, the full screen optimizations that you can turn off inside the properties of an application do not have any measurable impact on these results. Neither has the higher resolution that the MG278Q supports. 
Now there's one more thing that we want to find out and that is if using a frame rate limiter that is not built into the game negatively affects the delay. So a tool that works for both FreeSync and G-Sync is RTSS or the RiverTuner statistics server. When you use that to limit your frame rate to 142 FPS, then this increases the button to pixel delay by about 7 milliseconds. AMD's FRTC and the Nvidia Inspector on the other hand cause a delay increase of about 14 milliseconds. So that is still about 6 milliseconds less than the VSync delay, but it's quite a bit more than what you get with the FPS limiter built into the game. So both FreeSync and G-Sync successfully eliminate tearing and keep games smooth while not increasing the button to pixel delay. However, the problem here is that while G-Sync manages to maintain 142Hz nicely when using the FPS limiter built into the game, FreeSync seems to struggle to do the same. With FreeSync you have to set the in-game FPS limiter to 130 to prevent occasional tearing and stutter, and that means that I increase the delay as I lower the frame rate. With RTSS I had to choose 140 FPS to make sure that the display's refresh rate of the MG278Q would never spike up to 144Hz. And while AMD's FRTC or frame rate target control surely provides the best usability and manages to maintain 142Hz nicely, it nearly doubles the button to pixel delay. So what should you buy? G-Sync is quite expensive, but it maintains a specific frame rate or refresh rate easily and due to Nvidia's strict guidelines G-Sync performance should be the same across all monitors. FreeSync monitors on the other hand cost much less, however there is no guarantee that it will perform the same on every monitor and it seems to struggle to maintain a specific refresh rate when you use the FPS limiter built into the game. For me the bottom line is that if you ever played with G-Sync or FreeSync then you don't want to go back to your old monitor. So based on my very own experience, I absolutely want to encourage you to consider these technologies when you buy your next monitor. You just have to keep their pros and cons in mind and then choose what works best for you, your budget or your existing hardware as you cannot use a FreeSync monitor with the Nvidia graphics card and vice versa. With more than 1400 high speed recordings to go through and count the delays, this video was by far the biggest review that I have done to date, which is also the reason why it took quite a long time to make. I'd like to thank ASUS for providing me with the review samples of the RX570 and the MG278Q, which are already on the way back to ASUS now. And to avoid any misunderstanding, I want to make clear that I did not get paid by ASUS for making this video, neither am I sponsored by ASUS. So what you got here is my honest opinion based on my own experience and test results. So I hope that you enjoyed this delay analysis of FreeSync and G-Sync and if you like this kind of content where I test different technologies and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help to keep this channel alive by supporting me on Patreon, the link is in the description below. Also if you don't want to miss my next video then you might want to subscribe to my channel and since many of my subscribers tell me that they frequently miss my videos in their subscription feed, you might also like to click at that small bell icon below this video to get a notification when I upload the next one. If you also want to stay up to date on what I'm currently working on then you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook, the links are also in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense. <laughs>